for the, uh, for the very nice introduction. When people usually introduce me and say originally from Sierra Leone, I want to ask still from Sierra Leone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so welcome to the BD Lab uh, where I'm based. And what I'm going to talk about today is how we can create people who are going to occupy the cyber city that we've just been introduced to and who are going to take these resources that we have plenty of uh, to create uh, technology solutions for Africa. This is the MIT Media Lab that you are all aware of. And what we do here is we create the future. We create uh, technologies that uh, impact health. We create new ways in which we interact with people. And we create devices that, frankly, are going to transform our, the, uh, most of our lives here. But you wonder whose future are we really changing? Who's, uh, who's Whose lives are we go going to impact from the media lab? Uh, the images you see here, the one on the left is one of the good products that come from the media lab uh, called the Sixth Sense, designed by one of my colleagues, this <coughs> one fell down. And what it uses, it uses a projector and uh, augmented reality where you don't even need a cell phone anymore to make a call. You can project on your hand, you can call somebody, and you're talking. But this product is probably not going to make it too well in Sierra Leone. The reason, is, <laughs> the reason is simple. The reason why the product on the right will always win in Sierra Leone for the next couple of years, I think it's for two reasons. The cell phone there, one, is cheap. Two, it has a torch, a flashlight that people are going to use at night. <laughs> and, 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 and furthermore, it has an FM radio. When I'm walking in Sierra Leone, I want to be listening to the radio and be connected. I'll always choose, and like many other people in Sierra Leone, choose the image on the, on the right. And so it's very clear that the people who create technology uh, create the technology that they imagine for themselves based on the tools and the resources that they have access to. The tools and resources we have access to at the MIT Media Lab are probably not the same tools and resources that they have in Sierra Leone. So we need innovators who understand this. We need people who are going to create these solutions for Sierra Leone and for the MIT Media Lab. These are two people you may or may not know. You probably know the guy on the top. Uh, that's Bill Gates. And he, we know him as a successful man who has created technology that uh, uh, has continued to change the way we interact. I don't know how many people know the gentleman down there, but if I put his face up, you know him as an old man who has continued to live up the way uh, we learn and, and, and the laws by which we live. This is changing. We don't have old men anymore coming up with technologies that impact the world. Uh, from Facebook, which changed the way we globally connect, to Google, which further continue to uh, change the way we interact. Uh, I was just in Accra the other day, and Google is doing a fantastic job there. Uh, Google Maps can show you right throughout the city. But Africa also had these people. We have young people who are creating things. These are two energy entrepreneurs that I'm going to introduce you to. You probably know one of them. And this is Bernard. Bernard is from Tanzania. I was fortunate enough to meet him uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. What he does is he builds solutions that will charge his cell phone because he's not on the grid. And so he uses a bicycle that's readily available uh, to charge his cell phones. And, and uh, William, we all know, is a boy who harnessed the wind, and, and we are all proud of him. Uh, as a dropout from uh, uh, secondary school, he went ahead and built something for his home and impacts his community. But there's something missing. These inventive young people from the continent who are everywhere do not necessarily become the great innovators who change the world. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is the culture of innovation is missing in our communities. Innovation is a, is a, is a phenomenon which as an individual, which you have as an individual, you learn from when you're young that I have an idea, I'm going to create it. That's what we do here every day. It's something that must be supported by the, com by the community that you are in. And so if you 
say, I want to do something, your parents, your neighbors, your teacher, I should be able to help you to do this thing that you want to do. And frankly, many leaders have spoken about how innovation it will continue to uh, change the world, and, and Africa specifically. But it's easier said than done. I'm going to tell you how we are doing it and how I want you to join us in making sure that we create a generation of creative doers. We is a group of friends, and I started this organization called Global Minimum back when I was a freshman at Harvard. And uh, what we did was, um, well, I sent out an email to my friends. I said, look, we've been working in Sierra Leone doing mosquito nets and all. But what matters is actually having the Sierra Leoneans build their own technologies and their own solutions. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give $1,000 so that we can have an innovation competition uh, in Sierra Leone. And then, five minutes later, I got an email from a friend saying, oh, I give $500. And then, uh, 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 so, days later, it became to $5,000, right? And now we have a little bit more than $5,000. And what we're doing is we're running an innovation competition for high school students in Sierra Leone. We just came back from Sierra Leone. I was there with a colleague of mine from the media lab called Micah. And, and we went all throughout the country. That's the map of Sierra Leone. And we are challenging students to look in their communities and their neighborhoods to identify a challenge, tell us what resources they need, tell us what mentors they want, and we, what we are doing is creating for them a platform for them to fail. They can fail as many times as they want, but it's only from that failure that they are going to be successful. So we will provide them, We will provide them an, a, an avenue to fill. We will give them the resources, the financial resources to build these prototypes. And we will create a network for them. And this is us going uh, all across the country. And these kids are excited about it, these ideas. There were times when I'll get a phone call from the same kid like three, four times a day. Like, how do I do this? What, do, what can I do? And I think the success of our uh, trip was on the last day. I went to the market because I had to buy gifts for friends here. And there were these two women who were in the art store who, who looked, who saw me and they were like, oh, I know you. And I was like, how do you know me? He said, like, oh, you're the guy from TV. The other day I was like, okay, good. <laughs> and, uh, and then she said, yeah, but what I remember was that you were talking to us about us building solutions. And then, you know, I do laundry every day, and it takes so much time. I do it with my hands, and uh, my hands are always bruised, and it takes water. And I really liked the possibility of getting a mechanical washing machine. I said, wonderful. You should create it. He said, well, yeah, but I, how can I join a competition? And I said, oh, I'm sorry, you can't join a competition just yet because it's for high school students. And, but then you can tell your little kids to join the competition, right? What that story represented for me was that this communication was the end. The people wanted to create uh, the own solutions. It takes an investment. Like I told you, it was very minimal to start with. And it probably would not be too much uh, to think that this money and these resources exist. This is one trillion dollars, and that is the estimated amount of money that some people say can be spent in aid to Africa over the last 50 years. Now you can imagine that you could slash a couple of those zeros so that we can use these resources to frankly go from a uh, thought of saying aid to Africa to having products be made in Africa. Mm -hmm. And this uh, blue skies, uh, when you think about possibilities of things that will come out of this continent, and you don't have to look too far beyond the clouds to encounter exciting people. I'll share the story of DJ Focus. He's a 16-year-old kid in Sierra Leone who uh, puts together an FM station to serve his community. He got recycled materials from radios. He got some CD player that does not even have a top there. And he built his own uh, uh, speakers, and which he called uh, Focus Sound Systems. Very uh, entrepreneurial. This is wonderful. But what I am curious about is what is DJ Focus going to make next? There are ways in which we can create young, we can create uh, these innovators, these young people, and give them many platforms to try. And the reason why this is important, because we want to identify these individuals 
and help them use the creative freedom that they have as young kids, as, as, as young youth, the, the 50% or so that represent uh, the, 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 the African population, have them continue to play and build things with passion that's going to change their own lives and their community's lives. And then have them realize that they are not the only ones doing this. There are other people like them who actually venture and go out to make these solutions, connect them, and uh, unite them with uh, mentors from the countries, from the communities they are in, and mentors from a place like MIT, so that in 10 years, we have a generation of people who actually are building their own solutions to impact their own lives and their whole community's lives. So the, the competition in Sierra Leone is called Innovate Salon. Salon is a creole for Sierra Leone. And it's not just in Africa that we want to do this, right? It's in every emerging uh, uh, country. A colleague of mine saw this and thought, wonderful, I can do it in any other, I can do it in Jamaica. And now they have Innovate Jamaica coming up. And there are some of you in this room who I've spoken to who are excited about running similar competitions um, in, in, uh, in, in other parts of the continent. Now my challenge to you, ladies and gentlemen, is simple. You are from a very beautiful spectrum of uh, geopolitical uh, countries in Africa. You're also beautiful people. <laughs> but what I want you to think about is how do you use the resources, the network, the positions you are in to train a generation of possibility in Africa? How do we go beyond ourselves and encourage people who can think and critically use the resources that they have within the constraints that they are in to solve and present solutions that are going to impact the whole globe? Thank you very much. <laughs>